Doctors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this uh, Thursday, the 20th of April. <clears throat> Gosh, the month is going really quickly. The Dow's down 167 to 33,731. One of the reasons why, just at this particular point, unless there's a five or six hundred point in the days young, five or six hundred point slide. Uh, that nine period moving average in the Dow daily chart way above the 40 is just saying there is still residual strength. And that residual strength is saying to me that it's going to be a process unless we see, um, unless there's some kind of news that comes out tomorrow, maybe an economic uh, slant to the whole thing that says, oh, that is just exactly what the Fed is not wanting to see. And the market suddenly tanks. I think it's a process that we're looking at here. And if you look at the daily chart, you can see it's holding well. This is the fourth session since the high of 34,082, which was, and this made me a little nervous, under the 34,331 high of the 14th of February. And it had already gone down to uh, 3,000 points <clears throat> and then rallied back up. So it stalled underneath that previous high. That always makes me a little concerned, but I am impressed that there is residual strength Based on the 9 over the 14, MACD is still good. Stochastic still up at the 89% level. That's great. But if you look at the weekly chart, the way it got repelled from this green trend line resistance last week, and this week has done exactly the same thing. Now it's testing the lower line in this little Chapman Wave inside track repellent channel. It just says there's a lot of resistances to, to overcome at this particular point, and you can see in the monthly chart. Let me just do this real quickly with the S&P, and then we can move on to a bunch of other things that are questions I had about uh, the, the market and different stocks, a lot of stocks to look at today. S&P uh, did go to, I'm calling this a peak F right now. There's, uh, I could call it an alternate count B. I just don't see it as a B right now. I'm calling it an F. I might have to change that. 41.63 was the high, but... 41.95 was the high back in um, in February. So year again, it didn't take out in leg C. It didn't spiral right through that. But the week, the weekly chart is it has improved a lot, and it says that there is actually enough residual strength at least to contain the price right now. Because under other circumstances, instead of being down 21 at uh, 41.33. We should normally be down about 44 to 56 points at this stage. So this is actually quite good action. Within that context, the weekly chart cup formation says there's a chance that we could try to make a leg D in this phase right now without double topping. And that would take us above 4,049. Uh, that was the, is that correct? 4,040, oh no, 4,195.44, yeah, it was that high that was made in February. And we'd go above it by one penny for leg D. Uh, we could still make a peak C1, C2 and stall here, but I am looking at it and saying, wow, that weekly chart's improved a lot. And that means that the monthly chart, we can follow that because we've now only got a week to go after this coming week and see if we can break to the upside of that resistance line. Okay, looking at the QQQ, this is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. I uh, double top. If I look at the vertical test, let me just get this right here. I was going to do it yesterday, but I wasn't sure. Okay, whether or not we'd be pulling back from that peak there. We just missed it by a fraction. I thought I typed in. Oh, that's right. I had to intraday. I was just saying to myself, please don't, please don't, please don't. Uh, Stall on me now, and all of a sudden I got this little, this little. Okay, we got the little circle that was circling, 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 and not letting me close out a, a, the program or save it. I had to close it down three to one point six three. Okay, so three to one point six three. I think I did this yesterday. Three to one point six three, 
And then the high three days ago was just under at three to one point four three. Remember we spoke about this yesterday. And I said the technicals are still quite good. It's not like there's a huge failure. But we watched the MACD uh, deflect lower, and I said, that is a technical problem. And the stochastic's under 80%. The on-balance volume is down. But that nine-period moving average so much higher than the 14-period moving average is a good sign. And you can see it's trying desperately today to try to get positive. I don't know if it will, but it's only down 74 cents. And that weekly chart is has improved a lot. So while we, we have taken off our, our trading long position in the Dow and gone to the short side, uh, I've got a reasonably tight stop on that short because I think there could be a bounce. I got a feeling that, that a bounce will still have that hold. This, this is uh, the inverse. In other words, the S&P, let me just show you the SPY itself. So the SPY, uh, actually now this is what I wanted to show you. I forgot to change that because the SPY did go to a peak F it was stalling at the E, went to an F, and if you look at the E mini, look at this, this is a continuous contract. Look at that doji candle right there and says, uh oh, doji candle, then followed by, oh, this is a doji candle, the, the, I'll give you the date, there it is. Doji candle on the 14th of Feb, doji candle on the 17th of, of Feb, April, April, and then a tiny, the tiniest little candle we've seen in quite a while for the high at eight on the 18th at 41.9825, and now it's pulling back with a fourth Doji candle uh, yesterday and today. So far, is a red candle. Actually, it looks like a Chapman Wave Roman candle, but the day has just barely begun, so we can't even talk about it. And for the first time, it snuck above the resistance level and a Fibonacci number, but then it came right back in. Uh, so we're watching this very closely in the E-mini because that's part of what we look at. But really, the root is the S&P cash. So let's go to the QQQ. QQQ is saying um, this whole action of four bars on the right side, which is not really breaking up towards the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, the dash green line, says that it's kind of stalling here. There was a chance that it could buy the fifth, by the May the 12th. May the 12th could test the high that was made back in last last year, in August, the week of the 19th, the 334.42. So far, that's been stalling. But I, I have to tell you, if we go sideways a little bit longer, we could use up downside energy just by using side time rather than price. IWM has been a little problematic. IWM is way down at the bottom. It really, until the IWM starts to trade on a weekly basis above 185, I just have to think that uh, the small caps are stalling. And I want to do this quickly here. Gold, uh, as I said, gold is stuck in a range. I don't see it as a short at this particular time. And I don't even see it as a long. I just think a holding pattern, if you are in it, I wouldn't be doing anything. I'd be looking maybe to add on a sharp pullback, but it's got tremendous support in the 1950s. There is the 2022, looking at silver continuous contract. Uh, that's a little different because that's holding the uh, support levels of the nine period moving average of the 14 very well. It's up 17 ticks at 25.54. And the weekly chart is actually quite strong. And I'll just go to the dollar. As we wrap up, we have to go to this next break. But the dollar is down 20 ticks at 101.75. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yeah, so the euro, I've got, there's no other way I can count it. I can count it as leg, a peak D, a peak C in the daily chart, F slash D double topping in the uh, weekly chart and leg B in the monthly. But the technicals here again are very good. So it says there's a little bit more room maybe on the upside. And let's look at the USD JPY because they often go in reversion. So the, the, you've got uh, peak E if there's no new high today. And it's starting to stall. The technicals are still very good. But that 200 period moving average of 133.70 is like a magnet. It's trading right now at 134.10. And we're going to be watching this very closely. So the other thing I'm also looking at here is, so high-grade copper. High-grade copper is trading down again, uh, down a penny at 406. Uh, I'm just looking at this to say, kind of stalling here. What I need to just include at this moment before I forget is that the SMHs are running today up 2.23 at 252.85, but they're starting to make lower lows and lower highs. So what happens here, does this become, and this is the patterns that I like to teach you know, when, I, when I have subscribers who ask me questions, if I do my webinars or I do an all-day webinar, I'm always discussing these patterns. This is like an H pattern at the same time the daily chart, there's this very obvious. I love the way the bar rallies, rallies, and then it stalls, and it, it gets hit by a trend line, and that trend line is so forceful that the price gets repelled again. But at the same time, yes, there's a potential for a chapter B falling X formation if the if the S and if the SMH is a semiconductor market vectors ETF is able at 252 right now, 253, let's say, if it was able to trade on a weekly basis in the 261 area, that's nine points higher. So that, that would be important. But just to get there, 257 would be a really, really strong move in this time frame, April, going into early May. If it's able to do that, I'd have to change everything because I must say, everything I'm looking at here is suggesting that other than some very deep economic aspects that are so unusual we haven't been there before, this is you're, you're looking at a market where money has been put into the sideline 
And if anything, and it will take a long time before people really get back into the market. You would have to see, I forget the SMHs for a little while, usually they use them as a benchmark, and they're saying right now, choppy to sideways, so just be a little careful. But when you start to see, say, the Dow start to trade very nicely in the 34,500, 700 area, the S&P skyrocketing to the 4280s, 43 level, that's when money comes back in. It just inevitably happens. Until we get that, I think we're going to see some choppiness. But isn't it fascinating? And I'll go to the stuff that I really wanted to talk about in a moment. But I wanted to show you. So crude oil is down sharply underneath the 200 period moving average. Remember, I drew in these rectangles. I see this propeller shaft right here with the resistance of the 84s is very powerful. If we were to break out above that after this particular propeller shaft move, you see this pink rectangle here to the downside using the base as your support level, then it bounces and forms this uh, rectangle formation, and then it breaks down and goes under it to the 64 level. Then where does it stall? It stalls at 64. There's a continuous contract. Uh, I'm sorry, 83.53, a week of the 14th of April, and now we're getting the sharp move down back into the rectangle, which means the midpoint line, which is where it is right now, it's called it 77. A close under 76.10. Let's call it 75.90. says, uh-oh, Chance of going all the way back to the 69 level. So that's, there are a lot of things here that really could be helping the market. So within that context, let me show you something else. You've got natural gold. Coincides exactly with the question of the den about natural gas, UNG. UNG is down 0.01 at 2.208 in the continuous contract. And one of the reasons why I didn't want my subscribers to go into the UNG is because I think there is something wrong. Maybe it's with the contracts. Maybe it's, I think it's a purely technical issue. There is a glut, but that, that shouldn't stop huge moves to the upside from happening with short covering. I think there's something else going on, and I don't really want to touch it. Uh, the UNG that is, that is the trading vehicle, U.S. Natural Gas Fund, uh, it's at 6.95. It could move higher, but it should have done that yesterday without pulling back too much, and today should be leg B. It should peak A maybe yesterday, and then leg B today. So something is wrong with the contract. So uh, the question was, could I look at it? And I'm saying I'm looking at it, but that weekly chart says, the MACD actually turned positive. The histogram has been improving week after week, and now for the last two weeks, it's been positive. The unbalanced volume gave you a lovely V-shaped bottom, but that stochastic at 3.99% is just saying something is wrong. And I, I would just advise if you're involved in UNG, just trade it. Trade it in intraday and get out. Trade it intraday, get out. And at some point when it really starts, the UNG, if it actually starts to hold for three days and using the 745 level, 7.45 level as a support, you can tackle the 894, 14 period moving average in the weekly. So I would, this particular point, I, if you've got profit, take it. Got profit, take it. I'd rather not be holding it because there's something wrong with the contract. It just not is not acting. It's acting like oil did that time when it went to minus 40. I don't know if this will go to minus. It just is not acting correctly. This is not. There's either there's just a massive glut or whatever it is. It's not acting well. So a question came in. Can I look at Intel? You were looking at the semiconductors. Could you also look at Intel? Um, someone has been nibbling at it and said they'd like to add. I would hold off. It's made a peak D and it's now under the 200 period moving average in the daily. The weekly chart has gone back. It's just about to go back into the big rectangle that it was in between 20, the 24s and the 30 level. And then it broke out to the upside to just under 34. So give it a little time. But I do think some, it's wakening up. And that's really important. So if you start your position because you're a longer term builder of positions, I'd say hold off a little bit. Maybe give me a yell and it gets to about 325 if it does to 298. That's about the area that I'd say, hey, this is where it should be forming a new base. It hasn't yet. So that's what I'm saying there. The question about ETH, E, ETH, E. I think that the Brit whole Bitcoin uh, 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 is, is starting to pull back. You made your peak G uh, just recently. It's now under the 200 period moving average. So Ethereum, 
is at minus 16 cents at 9.67. This is a peak C in the in the week. It should drive for a D, but it doesn't have to do that very quickly. So I think it'll test the 939. It's at 967 right now. But the way I'm looking at it, this low that was made right here before it gapped up and then popped all the way to the 11, 11 area, uh, this low of 9... Yeah, 9.50. I was going to say 9.46. 9.50. Let's, let's see how it holds it. If it breaks under 9.50, it could take a little while longer to build, to rebuild the base. But the 9 is still way over the 14, but the price is under the 200. So that's an issue. Uh, next question. Okay, so now let me do this. I think I've done. No, I haven't. TLT. So the TLT went right to the rectangle low. It's just amazing how this, in the daily, how this happens. But the weekly is it's stuck in a rain and it can stay in this room. So I'm just going to say for the moment, I've been saying this for a long time, I'm not interested in interest rates, but it is a factor. You must look at each uh, TRI. Yeah, TR Hort. Look at this. TR Hort. Oh, this is dark. H D I uh, D R D. -D I'll, I'll figure it out. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. DR Horton is DHI uh, home builder. Look at this, almost an all to within pennies of an all-time high. Big gap up today, earnings up 741 and 109, up 7%. Look at Lennar. What I was saying to Tom the other day, what is the Fed thinking here? They've got the, the housing sector is actually what they would like to calm down. That's how you're going to get some chunk of your uh, disinflationary aspect uh, achieved. 113.40 up four, up 3.7% in Lenar. 
An all-time high was just uh, in July. I was, I'm sure it's an all-time high. It was 117.54 in December of 2021. Let me just check. Yeah, I mean, just a way all-time high. What are they going to do? That's the interesting thing. This is a wonderful positive for the market. If you were looking at the market, you'd say, wow, to have the home builders doing this. But at the same time, what is wanted in the economy are two separate things. So it's a, it's a tough thing to deal with. Uh, here's, another, here's another aspect that I want you to look at. Uh, where did it go? Oh, I wanted to do this the other day. Um, well, first of all, congratulations to GT the other day. I think he actually has been switching from the long side to the short, puts to calls on some of the Chinese stocks. He was on the short side of XPEV, I believe. But let me just have a look. I haven't even checked it. EV, uh, there it is. Uh, whoa, whoa, very nice double top and pulling back down uh, 39 cents and 9.48 in the rectangle formation. You remember I spoke about this. I had a question about Alcoa yesterday. I said this rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Well, it's up 50 cents today, Alcoa, but it is in the rectangle. Until it really decisively breaks above it, you're just going to say, well, it's got a lot of resistance in the 43, uh, 42 area. Let me just give you the exact figure. Um, that'll be the gap over there and then the high over here. So that'll be 42.89. It's called it between 42.80 and 43.20. That should be strong resistance. It breaks above that. Now you can look at something else and say, great, I've formed some kind of a base. But even the weekly chart, that's kind of, that's tough stuff. Next question came in um, about, yeah, so that that was Ethereum. So I'm just saying that, I believe if you go to the Bitcoin, Bitcoin has had a spectacular, we've made a peak F in the daily chart. It's a leg E, probably a peak E this week in the weekly. It did almost the one-to-one. -one. And I, you remember, I'm not a fan of, of great moves that failed at a previous high. And 32,340 was the previous high in the continuous contract of the Bitcoin futures. And the last one went to just, uh, just under 31,000. So I'm watching this closely, but the technicals are still pretty darn good. We'll see where it comes out over the next three to five sessions. Uh, one other question was, oh, could I look at HOG? I hope I've still got the chart here. Uh, let's just see what happens. Here we go, HOG, your guess is as good as mine. Oh, I had drawn this in some time ago. Look, there's the monthly. There was a left side, right side price time match. Oh, it did it almost exactly. Um, look at that doji candle back in 2021 May at 40 at 52.06. Tumbles down to 30. And then what does it do? In February of this year, it goes to 51.77. I, I can't believe how many times we see over months, this is over a year, it drops almost 40%. And then what does it do? It comes back and stalls within pennies. Harley Davidson of the previous high. That was a peak E in the weekly. I haven't done anything in the arch formation, but look, at, let me just see what I, I know. I did a lot of work on hog before because I said, what will happen if people actually get into the electric motorbike area? Um, well, it did the one-to-one -one from that peak D. Beautiful left side, right side price time match. That's the boss symmetry. Went right back to the low that was made on the 28th of December at 39.84 after spiking all the way to that 52 high, 51.77 high peak D. Back on the 2nd of Feb, gapped up and then filled the whole gap. And then it took the same number of bars. I just love the way it does this. Number of bars to the left was one day late in getting back to the uh, 40, 41, let's say 40. That was a 41 round number low the day after the 40.29 high. And it took it out, and now it's gone side. Remember the rectangle formation can last a lot longer, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. So I would say nothing to do, nothing to see in Harley. Now I have to congratulate Paul a long time ago said it was comparing NVIDIA to GE, and I said, no, you've got to think of them separately. They could do the same thing, but one is, there's dividends, there's um, uh, earnings, it's a big turnaround. And, and what did it do today? He said today, hit 100. That's spectacular action. General Electric is the leader of the field. GE trading up 73 cents at 99.75. But wait a minute, you can't rule out NVIDIA. So GE's gone from the uh, uh, 50s to the 99s, and NVIDIA has gone from 108 to 277. So you remember I said, 
it's, it depends on your own personality of what you look at in terms of the stock market, what you want to do, what you can sit for, how much risk you can take. That's number one. And number two is um, there's nothing wrong in knowing that you're buying a high PE stock that's the leader of a field. It's just gone to leg D in the weekly chart. Still really good action. That's just saying within the semiconductor area, you've got losers and winners. And the winners are really carrying the, had been carrying the day. Now we're going to see what happens from here on in. That's number one. Number two is um, GE is a different thing altogether. You remember I said I made a terrible mistake for subscribers because I said I wanted to get GE um, and it was splitting off. And we would have had two. For, oh, it was, it, what a nice move that was. GE is trading at. Uh, 9970 right now, but GEHC, which is the healthcare division, GEHC is the healthcare division. Look at that move from the 50s to the to 86 right now. Uh, this is this is fantastic action, and I just have to admit that it was uh, just a very silly move on my part to to hold off. And at any point, even maybe today, you could grab these things because they are. In the they just it's the right area. That's all I can say. So uh, within that context, and that's E F G C. This is a D. So there are. Look at that. So we've got a brand new A B C D E in the G E H C. All right, I, I got those things done. P P L T. Uh, I, I looked at platinum yesterday. I said fabulous move up, and it broke the left side, right side price time match. This is platinum continuous contract. This is in a leg F right now it could even be an alternate account but i'm not going to go that far just yet there it is so the target would be uh going to the pplt i think it is pplt the target would be the left side high this is a leg f up in the in the daily chart of uh, aberdeen platinum etf would be this high of 101.88 and today it's gone to 101.47. So I'm watching to see does it top out here. All the technicals are fabulous. So that's platinum. Next question was, wrote it down, wrote it down. Oh, a race. So this is talking about a race. This is Ferrari made a, a, a gap up to a doji candle E. I think I spoke about it a few days ago. I said Ferrari is moving up sharply. What happens next is going to be very important because if you do the same thing, ROY, C Y, I think it is. Yeah. Royce. R O Y C E. Oh, that's right. R O Y C E F, maybe. Oh, no, I just forgot about it. R R Y. R Y C E F. I believe that's it. There it is. So, yes, Rolls Royce. Oh, I had this note there just recently. Oh, I, I, look at that. It's not an all-time high, but it's at a recovery high, a year and a half high at 1.920. Um, and it's just very interesting that one, the Ferrari is winning. <laughs> There's no question about it. Um, it just go esoterically, I just want to go to different things. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yeah, correct. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. I was about to mention that this completely slipped my mind, but I do know that that Rolls Royce now is just the Rolls Rolls Royce engines, and it's just interesting to see because uh, it's been a really nice recovery from the high that was made back in 2021, uh, just at about two, and then it plops down to um, the 70s, 0. 0.70, and now it's back at 1.92, uh, and that's just telling me that. There are things going on in the economies that are not being recognized. Uh, yeah, Ferrari is race. I got that. Uh, race, uh, RAC is the uh, symbol for race. They, they're separate things. But uh, the point I wanted to make was that in terms of famous names, the Ferrari is making new highs. And usually you find that people who have really, uh, I don't mean lots of money, I mean just money oozing out of every pore, they kind of back away very quickly when things get tough. But there's something else that's going on now with, with, with the Rolls-Royce. This is the BMW, I believe it's BMW Rolls-Royce. And, um, and with really expensive cars and that there are a lot of people that are buying them um, for investment. And there's a waiting list. And I, I read about six months ago that some people that put the name that had bought cars um, on the waiting list and then got the cars in the sequence that they had their names down, those cars actually, I don't know about today, but up until maybe a few months ago, some of those cars were selling at premiums to what they pay. So some people haven't even got delivery of the car and they just moving the delivery, selling the delivery car coming up. So it's, uh, the, things are happening here that are so unusual when we've been in a, in a year and a half, no, a year and a quarter. Uh, I, I'd say bear market at different times, but really a bear phase. You can look at this chart right here. We've been making low lows and low highs until uh, the most recent uh, October low. And now it's made a, had two months of big moves, and now it's kind of struggling. But it's remarkable when you're looking at the home builders. Look at this BLDR. We did this the other day. Still doing fantastically. Yep, it's pulled back a little bit from that peak E. This is the builder's first resource. It's a resource they got uh, in the construction business. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that things are not what you would read about. With and some of the stuff you read, I mean, your heart just stops. You say, "Is the United States? Are we really? Is that us? I mean, that, that's like third world country stuff." And then you look at the the market itself, and you say, "Wait a minute." This is very different. This is pretty darn good. Looking at the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund, nice move up from the low that was made recently in the 2-12-13 area. And now we're at 2.30. But a lot of work needs to be done. So that's what I'm saying. This is a very mixed market. Look at the XLF. XLF trading um, down just three ticks today at 33.41. 
probably a, P, a peak D. But this is a nice rally off the low. But it, is this the rally that you would expect with the fantastic announcements over the last week that we've heard from many of the banks like a JP Morgan? Where's JP Morgan? It's held its gains, I think. It's, it's the leader. And within sectors, you've got some stocks that are leading and some stocks that are lagging. Look at this. JP Morgan, that's a wonderful move off the gap because you've had three sessions, whoops, two sessions after the gap with higher highs, and even now you're holding. This is good action. But wait a minute, Bank of America, this is a struggle down at the bottom here. And this is what I said yesterday we were looking at. I lost it. I had to renotate the whole darn thing. It was AZO. This is, yeah, AZO, which is AutoZone. I said almost at an all-time high. It's within pennies. It had been an all-time high today. It's almost there. Orly, O-R-L-Y, O'Reilly Auto. These are all parts because people are, I mean, the price of cars today is just out of sight. The average price. But people are paying that and people are upgrading. I mean, I spoke about that about a year ago. I said, you know, I seem to be seeing people upgrading their cars. Some of them do it without realizing it, but they're upgrading. Um, and that's that's. They're paying a lot of money. And then if you buy it and you lease it, you're paying for all those accoutrements. You're paying interest on those things. Anyway, look at this, Orly. But wait a minute. It was AAP, I believe. I hope, I hope I still got it notated. Yeah, AAP, Advanced Auto Parts. Completely different from the 240s high that was made over a year ago. Um, it plummets down to 100, about 100 and, uh, 109. And here it is at 128. It's struggling. And that's what I wanted to say. The selectivity is absolutely imperative, and that's what you've really got to be focusing on. A uh, question came in about, where was it? Oops, where, where, oh, I've lost one of my emails because it's got a, it's too old. My One of my computers that I just use for certain things, and mostly for emails, was uh, Windows 7. Um, okay, what does this say? Didn't get that. And all the junk I'm getting on this new Email. Well, it's it, it's Outlook, but they re they updated it. But now I'm getting all the junk. I never got much junk mail at all. Okay, so that's what I wanted to point out. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. A failure under peak E was XBI. Is that the one? XBI. So XBI is Spider Biotech. Oh, it's S&P Biotech. Um, no, this is not the one. So what I wanted to say yesterday, and I, I, I spent some time on it, is that the bio, the large biotechs, the microbiotechs, some of them have been just unbelievably strong. But the larger ones um, are having a bit of a struggle, and that's why I said I think the PPH is doing much better. So you've got the PPH made a peak E, I said, at that resistance level with the doji candle from last week. That could pull back, but this is actually a way better chart. And we were specifically looking at Merck, and I said, maybe a little bit more of a pullback, but this is this is a really good one. I wouldn't be lightening up. I'd be rather looking to maybe add on some kind of a move. Yep, that's all in the healthcare area. Um, so that I, I've re – oh, Question again, what number is Schwab on your 28-day uh, excursion? So Schwab is trading up 12 cents at 55.67. This is day 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've got one more day to go. So my theory was that uh, Schwab made a Chapman Wave price volume climax on the 13th of March at 45 round number low. And then that should lead, it should not take out the 45 low, number low um, within 28 days. If after 28 days is trading well above the gap high, that would be, what did I say? I keep looking, I should type it in some one of these days. And that's uh, 54.90. And right now it's a 55.63. Well above means up in the 59.62 area. It could go for another 28 days. So uh, that's what I want to look at. Uh, VKTX, VK, VKTX, VKTX. Oh, wow, what a nice move. Viking Therapeutics, Inc. Now, um, Ilu, I don't know if you were the one that gave me, or if this showed up in my uh, scan. I think in my scanner this showed up. Um, and it was way down here, and I said, this is amazing. It made a peak, E pulls back. Um, this is VKTX, is Viking Therapeutics. And sort of I was saying about these microcap stocks. Look at this. 
leg, this is only a B. There's no other way. Well, there is another way. Yes, it didn't take out, did it take out that low of 825? What is the low there? 868, yeah. This could be F slash G, G slash B. This is really a leg B at this particular point. What a spectacular move. And in the uh, weekly, it's a leg D. Spectacular move. Oh, what's the question? We can be in that space, just for your big runs and give it all back. Maybe this time different. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll... TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So Vital Therapeutics monthly chart made a high, a round number. I love round number highs. Oh, you remember, what was it? Uh, uh, I can't, uh, 278. What was it? What hit 278 recently? Double the round number high. Anyway, 24 round number high. September of 2018, peak D, whoosh, comes down, takes a long time from 2018 to 2022 to make a low. It's $2.02. That's what a 90 something percent uh, decline. And then what does it do? It goes to peak A, peak B, and leg C. And that says if this is going to continue, then it should try for 24 sometime between now and uh, July. Uh, this is a little, a little conservative using left side, right side price time match with that peak B minus from the second, uh, from February of 2021. But in the meantime, very short term, I've got this as a potential D right now in the weekly chart and only a, 
I, I could count it. I'm going to just give it the benefit of the doubt for now and say it's a B because all the technicals are very strong. So the support is between 19 and 18, but it just has to go one penny above. Uh, if it doesn't make it today, that'll extend leg B. But if it doesn't, after tomorrow, 2180 starts a leg C if, it, if, it's, if this becomes peak B. So let me just do this before we wrap. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to wrap up. So you're going to go to Steve Rose. Don't forget, great programming here. Um, I'll be back uh, look right at the 200-period moving average in the E-mini down 18. So this is going to be very interesting. So what I said, it's a process. And therefore, I didn't expect, unless it was just a huge 600-point or more sell-off today, I didn't expect that um, it... It would just all happen in one move. I think this is a process of, of starting to see weakness but that nine is still over the 14 and it's holding. That's right, we haven't got too carried away. We've got some insurance here, that's the main thing. But most importantly, how we can see over the next week going to the end of April, do we see the 34,300 hit or do we slide under 34,300? Big differences between the two. Have a wonderful day. Check out Moment